straight out of, well, his bedroom. I, I mean, I thank you for waking up early and, and giving us a call. Stephen Weatherly, everybody, defensive end, Minnesota Vikings. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever listened to this show, but I uh, hope you don't feel like you wasted your time waking up this early. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I look forward to being on it this early. Oh, good, good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, so many questions to talk to you about. Uh, we were trying to discuss. We've each talked to you individually at different events. Corey was at an event with you last year for Vikings uh, country. Vikings country. I've done a few things with you. I'm sure you met uh, uh, Saucy as well. But uh, for the people listening for the first time, we're going to ask you about 40% of the questions we're going to ask you. You've been asked a million times. So just be prepared for that if you're okay with that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. Okay, cool. Question number one. Uh, you're, it's mentioned in your bio that you like playing paintball. I can't get these guys to play paintball with me. When I my knee it, gets though. better, will you play paintball with me, please? Uh, absolutely. I don't even know there was. There has to be because there's one in every state. But um, definitely not today where it's going to be, a, what, a high of 10. But yeah. when it starts to warm up, I will definitely be out there on a paintball course with you. Fantastic. Well, mark it down as a date. That sounds great to me. Okay, good. Stephen Meat Sauce, um, are you good at paintball, and what makes somebody good at paintball? Let me tell you something. Uh, being good at paint, I, am I good at paintball? Yes. Um, I'm a pretty good marksman, and it's only because my dad was a sheriff, and also was a part of SWAT growing up. So he would take me to the range a lot when I was younger. Your dad was part of SWAT. I knew he, I, I didn't know he was a part of SWAT. No kidding. Wow. Yeah, he was uh, the point man. So he was a guy uh, right behind the shield when they walked into places. Did and did Whoa. you when he was doing that? Were you little and did you know that that was what his job was? Um, when I got older, like uh, like eleven, twelve, then yeah, uh, that's when I learned. I always knew he was like a sheriff, um, and he would uh, work at the academy and teach uh, incoming cadets like the way of how to be like good sheriffs and stuff like that. And I knew because I saw always saw the equipment. And uh, as a curious kid, it's important that you address it and not have them try to look at it on their own. So that's when he like walked me through like what this is, why I shouldn't touch it. And then a little bit as I got older and older and older, he was like, "Well, I'm a part of SWAT, but I'm not like in the back or I'm not a sniper. I'm the uh, I'm the breaching guy." And I was like, "Well, what does that guy do?" It was like he has a picture of like a six person SWAT team. You see that guy in the front crouching with the shield? That's me. I was like, "Whoa." Wow. So, hey, wow! Back to paintball for a second, even though that's heavy as hell. Um, <laughs> so you know, we you know the uh, the Minnesota Rock or the uh, the Call of Duty League mm-hmm. uh, team. You know, uh, I know you're a, a gamer a little bit as well, but uh, uh, you know they break down film. They have strategy. It's hardcore. Do you take paintball that serious, uh, where you are uh, a part of a team and have strategy, or do you just do what we did back in the day, where you just go out and wing it and try to shoot somebody? You know what? It's messed up. Um, I do, but I always go in trying to have fun. But then if someone's <laughs> talking trash to the other team, I just gather everyone up and say, hey, listen, I'm so sorry you guys got roped into this, but I'm hyper competitive. So we got to come up with a plan to win. Yeah, if we do play them on your team. Yeah, no doubt about it. But I, I would think that you're, you're so much bigger than me. I can hide literally under a rock a lot of times because I'm only 5'6". It'd be hard for you to hide behind a tree. No, and that and that could be one of our strategies. I just run out and I just absorb as many shots as possible. And when I put my hand up and peel off, you come up with a with a easy marksman shot. Just pop, pop, pop. Okay, I like it. Well, again, Stephen Weatherly, defensive end, Minnesota Vikings, our guest. And uh, I want to talk about um, your family, and I'm going to get there by starting here. Yesterday, you were part of Celebrate Perseverance, uh, the, an initiative with the Vikings during Black History Month with the great, and I don't say that lightly, Alan Page. I know you've probably had time to spend time with him. That said, I'm going to guess that he probably reminds you a lot of people you grew up with in your family because of his continued desire to educate and better himself and to help the people who come after him. Talk to me about spending time with Alan Page yesterday. Um, being able to, to co-lead a discussion with Justice Page was honestly amazing. Um, I only had a handful of opportunities to speak with him uh, whenever he came to the facility to watch the defensive line and, and never really like uh, jumped on the field, but always pulled a, one or two guys aside and, and asked what are they seeing when they, when they step out there, or what are they looking at or have they tried this? So he's not really a, a big vocal guy when he pulls you aside um, like a, like a John Randall, but he will. And so uh, for him uh, to be able to be next to him when he spoke about, uh, social injustices and what it was like for him growing up and the things that he's had to overcome not only during his football career but after and then off the field and all his phil- philanthropic adventures uh, was was amazing. Um, and I got to share a little bit more recent version of almost all of that. And uh, I hope that all the high schoolers there were able to absorb everything he was saying because he was dropping a lot of good nuggets. 
Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, Alan Page is a uh, is a legend in this town, of course, and uh, he's uh, he's a pretty good role model for all high school kids. But how about adults, right? Some of us should be more like Alan yeah, Page. Absolutely. I need to work a little bit harder. When was the last time I bettered myself? <laughs> Boy, that is right. a great question. Right? Yeah. It's been years since I've even thought about doing that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't ask it out loud. No, no doubt. Hey, uh, Stephen, after spending time, and I know you probably didn't spend a lot of individual time uh, with uh, the kids yesterday, um, but and doing that and doing other things you do as well, how much different is a modern high schooler from when you went to school? Because I'm going to be 50 this year, man. You were just in high school not that long ago. How much different are they already as a 25-year-old? Uh, drastically. Yeah. Um, they're, they're drastically different, but still at the same time at their core, kind of the same where they're just super eager. So as we began to talk, I got a little bit more nodding heads from whenever I finished a point and then so did Justice Page. And so that's something I think all generations of high schoolers have. They're like ready. They're ambitious. They're ready to go. They want to do something. They just don't know where. So it's a lot of like misplaced energy. So after the big discussion, a couple of kids actually came up to me one on one and asked, well, what else can I do to help? Like not just the 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 push for the african-american social justice agenda but all uh women lgbtq and that's a real question i got from a uh junior from a 10th grader he's like what can i do to help and i was like whoa i I love the ambition i love that you want to help and that you're eager to help but now it's just about gathering as much information as possible so you can be better equipped when your time comes and then i told him uh yesterday uh we had to answer a question um What's something that we really look forward to um, in the future? And then Justice Page and I both said, it's, it's this generation in front of us. It's y'all. Because my generation never really mobilized and staged major protests, but this generation, the one in front of us, staged a march on Washington after all the gun violence. So when this generation sees something that's wrong, they have no problem taking it to the highest level to show the world that we are not okay with this. And that is an amazing skill and trait that they develop. Well, and as you just said, though, that's a huge part of it is you can talk to all these kids and you can get in front of them and tell them everything you you guys want to get out to them. But if they don't do anything about it or they're just, you know, laissez-faire and don't really pay any attention. But when you have kids like that that are like, I'm eager and I want to help, that's a huge thing. Yeah, a thousand percent. And I feel like there's more of those uh, in this generation than there were in my generation, at least. Hey, so we, can we talk glass blowing for a second? Oh, yeah. And you know what? By the way, when you're telling us about your glass blowing, can you tell us how you're going to be a Netflix star as well? Please? Wait a minute. What now? Uh, All right. So I, I'd heard the glass blowing angle, and I tried it once 13, 14, 15 years ago for a charity event. Lake and I had to do it way back in the day. It's hotter than hell. <laughs> 2,000 degrees. Yeah, geez. kind of intimidating because you're like, oh, it's, you're going to feel it when you get close. And I'm like, God, as soon as you get close, you you can feel it. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a nerve-wracking thing the first time you glass blow. Uh, absolutely. You're not expecting, you've never felt what 2,000 degrees feels like. And as soon as they open up that door and you see that molten glass, it's, yep. it's now or never. You either got to jump in or you're going to get burned if you're not uh, committed to it 100%. So um, I started about a year ago, just been doing it. Um, I think I'm pretty decent. I can lead a small class of, like, beginners if I have to, uh, whenever my guy that teaches me how to blow glass isn't there. And um, through that, through the connections I've made, um, I'm fortunate enough to have an opportunity to be a guest judge on uh, Blown Away Season 2. So uh, sometime soon I'm going to be flying out and uh, seeing a bunch of uh, competitors compete <laughs> in an international glass blowing competition, and I'm going to tell someone that they did poorly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. sweet. <laughs> Steven, you should rip him. Nah, I don't really see your concept here. Um, <laughs> Steven, you seem like the kind of guy where it's you see something, you're like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And that's awesome that you have that ambition. Mm-hmm. Thank you. No, you always have to. And that's one more thing I told the kids. It's just like, at the end of the day, because one more thing we talked about was just, uh, just uh, what can we do, like moving forward, what can help. And I told all the kids, no matter what it is, um, just try it. If you have interest in it, just do it. Because if you try something new, you'll meet new people. If you meet new people, you see new point of views. And no one's saying you have to like everyone. But if you just try more things, you could end up liking something that you never knew you even had interest in. And it could take you places you would have never imagined. Uh, Stephen Weatherly, again, is our guest, uh, defensive end, Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Stephen, I, I don't want to, and we have some time, so please feel free, if you don't mind, 
take some time to tell me about her. I've wanted to ask you, um, because it's, it's kind of a, a side note in your personal life at the bottom of your bio, but I want to know more about your grandmother. She received degrees at both MIT and Harvard. Jeez. Yeah, so um, uh, exact age, I'm not really sure. So she was working for the city of Atlanta at the time and, um, and community enrichment. And so she had worked her way up, um, and the city of Atlanta asked her to go and do the programs at MIT and Harvard that were focused around community enrichment. And she was basically sent uh, on programs there. So I think each one was a couple of months each. And when she finished it, she, re- she received two certificates, a certificate from each place. And then on the way back down to Georgia, she stopped in D.C. Uh, to work for the state of uh, Georgia for a little bit. And then when she finally made her way finally back down to Atlanta, she started basically the Summer Safe Initiative, which every city adopted, which was just a program that at the time gave a solution to kids in the summer who really had nowhere to go. And this is way before summer programs, summer school, and things of that nature. So your parents were still working nine to fives in May, June, July, but kids literally had nowhere to be. And it was very unsafe at that time around the whole nation. So she put that together. She got it co-signed by a bunch of influential people at the time. There was a bunch of logistics behind it. It had some ups and downs. It can be a small Netflix movie in and of itself, yeah. but it got through. And my grandmother's name is forever on that. And then that same plan was adopted nationwide. And so uh, that's where those two uh, certificates came from. And uh, that's where education was definitely like a, a thing in that household, in my household growing up. Because when that is like grandma, there's no, there's no falling short ever. So let's let's go full circle with uh, paintball, glass blowing, um, your grandmother and greatness. Uh, when you are an NFL player, by definition, you're great, right? Because you you're you know in the top what one thousand football players in the world, mm-hmm. give or take. Uh, but when you do all these other endeavors like musical instruments or glass blowing or whatever, do you uh, do you ever struggle with just just being decent at something? Because I'm decent at a lot of things, but maybe not great at anything. How do you go to these different uh, uh, down these different paths, different hobbies? Do you ever struggle with just being okay at something? Uh, yeah, um, a lot, and it's it, it may be seen as as okay or better than okay to other people, um, but just I know that I have better. I know that I could do better, so it's more like a personal thing. So my mindset going into everything is that I know I could do better. Just if if I get another opportunity, you'll see it. And so that's how I take – that's how I take in a football, glass blowing, paintball, academics. It's like, okay, I tried it. Everyone else thinks I was okay or par. I, me personally, know that's not good enough. If I get another opportunity to do whatever this particular thing is, I'm going to blow it out the box. Yeah, you got to have lower expectations, man. <laughs> just, just – Never. Just, oh, just, never. Uh, yeah, dude, on a daily basis, I, I find something that I do and I go, that was good enough. Right. Cares. That's how I live my life. That's my, li- my life's not going to be any better if it's 10% better than it just was, so I just move on. Uh, oh, no. no, I I'll, always got to push for that extra – he won't be speaking to any kids anytime soon. Don't worry about it, Stephen. No, because I'm just decent at it. I'm not, if I was great at it, I would do it. True. Stephen, what is, minus football, what is the one thing you take the most pride in and that you're really, really, really good at? Outside of football, what is the one thing I take the most pride in and I'm really, really good at? Um, I would say something that I'm really, really good at is Oh, oh, um, I am good. I don't know why. Um, I think it developed over time. I'm like low key good at helping other people like reach their goals. Hmm. So it's just like, like, like we said earlier, like, uh, the one thing I like kind of earn is like jack of all trades, well rounded off the field. And so I have a lot of friends that do so many different things out there. So it's like, uh, I don't know if you ever remember generational tests, Kim Possible. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so remember how like she always had a ride to wherever exotic location. She was like, no problem, uh, Kim, you help me with this. Like I kind of have the same almost like expansive Rolodex or mm-hmm. trying to get to that point. So if someone comes to me and says, oh, I'm really uh, trying to do this. Do you know anyone in that field? Coincidentally, I may actually know someone, and it's not going to necessarily open the door for you, but it'll get you one step closer to it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, let me uh, let me pay what it forward skill. for myself then, Stephen. Can you coach poker, or do you know anybody that can? Because I suck. Yeah. yeah, I just I just taught a, a bunch of kids how to count cards <laughs> at a 
So I went on vacation Dominican, and I stayed at Dominican Treehouse Village, and I hung out with, uh, like, five kids from, like, oh. five to 13. And at the end of, like, a two-hour thing, I was teaching all the kids how to count cards in blackjack. <laughs> wow. Which, that's great. <laughs> that's, which is a great skill for those kids to learn. It's yeah. Math. Simple yeah. mathematics. It was just like, well, if you have, like, two decks and you've already seen three aces, how many aces are left? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, um, you know what? She's a I, maniacal laugh. I, I love Stephen. Right. Right. And Stephen, for you. I, I, we it's could evil. literally talk to you all day, but I won't do that to you. But um, we got to make this a more regular thing, man. I think you're a fascinating individual. And I think you've got you got a great history in front of you, man. You know, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing not only what you do because you continue to get better every year. And I know you credit Andre Patterson with a lot of that in your coaching staff. And we'll talk more about him in one second. But do you have? A plan for, let's say, 10 years from now after football's over. Are you going to be the next Alan Page? What do you want to do? Um, that The career path he chose after football is amazing. Um, um, I really haven't thought about doing something like that. Honestly, if, uh, people ask me what I plan on doing after football. I say stay at home trophy dad. <laughs> um, Brilliant. I, I'm all about family. I really want to like have a huge family, and I want to be able to go to all the PTA events. I want to wear jean shorts, Crocs, and socks. Like I want to be that dad. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, that's great. You can definitely do that. I think you can probably do more as well, but you can definitely do that. All right. Uh, before we let you go, then talk to me about how happy you are for Andre Patterson to uh, to get a shot at being even if it's even if it's co defensive coordinator. At least that's the next step for him. And I know you love that guy. Oh, absolutely. Uh, when I saw the news break, uh, super excited for him. And um, now, just I just want to I just want the best for him. And if I'm in the room next year, then we're going to make some magic. Well, uh, good luck. Hopefully, we'll talk to you down the road, and hopefully, you and I talk off the air because I'd like to be a part of your uh, blackjack team that goes to Vegas and tries to skim <laughs> money off of all the casinos, like the uh, the MIT blackjack team did back in the day. Stephen, thanks for talking to us, man. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, you got it. Stephen uh, Weatherly of the uh, Minnesota Vikings. We got to get that dude to play initials, man. Yeah, that guy's great. He's a smart guy, but he would do well. There's no chance they'd let him go. No, he's. Uh, they, uh, they. What a. I, I'm telling you. Again, wow. we've all had our our individual moments yeah. with him. What a great guy. Yeah, he's a great good dude. guy and super interesting guy. And in, in what a lot of people mostly care about in the football world. When he needs to play, he's yeah. really good. He gets better every year. He Correct. really does. Yeah. And um, uh, one of the bits we did on Vikings Connected with him this year was we sent him out, and that's how he learned the glass blowing thing, by the way. We sent him out to, I shouldn't say we had nothing to do with it. The Vikings sent him out to a bunch of different companies, different jobs, so you could he could learn how to do it. And one of them was running a caribou. Uh, by the time he was done with it, I was surprised he didn't own a caribou. Right. Because, yeah. I mean, probably will. Yeah, he probably will. Yeah, ah, love that what a kid, great man. interview. What a great guy. Yeah. I just became self-aware, though, during that interview. What's Same. That? that one of my skills is getting quickly decent at things, mm. but then yeah. never exceeding that. Like, yeah. way back in the day, uh, can you wakeboard? Yeah, I'm decent. Can you play guitar? Yeah, I'm decent. You play cards? Yeah, I'm decent. Play Rocket League? Yeah, I'm decent. I'm not great at anything. Yes, you are. Name one thing. You're great at yeah, being name one a- thing. You're great at being an a-hole. <laughs> Yeah, well, I just think I'm decent. Above average. <laughs> I'll say above average. I'll take it. You're an above average a-hole. <laughs>